my name is Tom Sullivan. I was born and raised here in Havistraw. And uh, later on, I moved finally to Stony Point. I was born in 1934 uh, up on Hudson Avenue here in the village. And then later on, uh, uh, my family moved down right across the street here on Wayne Avenue. And when I was going to school, and I started high school, I was still living on uh, Wayne Street here. After high school, I joined the United States Navy. I was a second class petty officer. Anyway, um, when I come home, I uh, got a part time job as a police officer with the uh, Bear Mountain Police. That's Palisades in the State Park. And uh, I made sergeant or detective. And I spent 10 years there. And then I moved, uh, got a job down with the county and the sheriff's department that was starting a investigative unit, the BCI. I spent some time as a deputy fire coordinator, I ended up being a fire chief in Stony Point. Uh, I was on the committee to design the fire training center and it was to be used for fire and police training. Uh, they've come a long way and uh, it's done, they've done a good job on it. My grandmother and grandfather Sullivan only lived a couple blocks away from here. And my grandfather worked for Rand Brick Company. And he was a foreman, stable boss. And the one story about him was uh, that he was backing up a, uh, uh, a horse and a wagon. And there was a guy tending the horse. And evidently, my grandfather had his hand on a railing, which was uh, in, in, had stripes into it, like gearing. And, uh, and he motioned for the fellow to come on back, back up, dump the clay. And he pulled the lever and dumped the clay, and my grandfather's hand was still on, on there. Well, anyway, tough old Irishman. He come on home, which was not far from the brickyard, and uh, talked to his uh, wife. She sent him to a local doctor, which was right around the corner here. Anyway, he uh, happened to, talk, to be treated by a, a Dr. Sullivan, Matthew Sullivan. Oh. Anyway, he got treated, he wrapped up his hand. He went back home. And the story goes, the story gets on and on. Uh, the biggest part of the story was that he finished a bottle of whiskey, walked back down to the brickyards, and finished up his day's work down there. Wow. That's Patrick Sullivan from Tipperary, Ireland. They were all born in Ireland. Uh, my grandfather Sullivan, um, he come over. Ended up in Havistraw, and he was a boarder. Worked in the brickyards. He was a boarder in his wife's family's house. Anyway, he ended up marrying her. And uh, the other stories I have on my mother's side, they were Hannigans, and the, most of them worked in the brickyards in Stony Point. Um, uh, my grandfather Hannigan, he come over in this. 18, late 1860s. He had two children born in Ireland, and the last one was born in 1863. So in 1864 or 5, he came over here. He worked for a, uh, um, a, a tool making company in, in Northern Ireland there, and, and uh, Donegal. And he heard about them, and they had a place in Virginia. And now I'm trying to think about uh, what the name of the company. It was a uh, a farm farm equipment, and uh, what they uh, he went into Virginia. And what they wanted uh, they wanted him to take one of these pieces of farm equipment out to the Midwest, 
and demonstrated to the farmers out there. But he got sick, and he couldn't, couldn't do it. So he worked his way up here to the Hudson River, and uh, got a job in the brickyards. Uh, my great grandmother had again uh, the house that they lived in, and they bought. It's still standing. Uh, they were taking borders, mm. and the borders would be from Ireland. Because mm. uh, I have census reports and all the names. Uh, yeah, my grandfather would uh, kind of steer him. There's a place for you to stay, and I'll try to get you a job. And you get him a job. Could be anything from just shoveling dirt, shoveling clay. Maybe uh, uh, if they got on a while, they might be running a burning brick, which was uh, you know a special technique. Uh, some of them later on got to be foreman. Uh, and uh, and the Italians come along. Uh, there was a lot of people from uh, Canada come down. They would come down for the season and work, and go back to Canada when, when they shut down them for the season. Mm. Mm. And uh, both of my grandfather and my great grandfather had again. They were engineers. Uh, they would run an in engine house. An engine house. Uh, was a steam engine, provided the power, and drove these belts that turned plumbing, pipes, piping, to each uh, brickyard. They, uh, the Hannigans did well in the brickyards. They made um, pretty good money. They were probably in the top third of the uh, wages paid. Others drove uh, trucks. Uh, another uncle uh, drove a yard locomotive, would take the brick from one place, bring it to the docks, and they'd load them on the barge. Right? And they, they all had good jobs, they all worked hard. My uh, grandfather, Hannigan, he used to walk to Rock Lake, it was 20 Point. About uh, six miles, seven miles, Easy. Easy. and he cut ice. Uh, the other grandfather, in the winter time, he would uh, in Garnival there. There was a factory, and they uh, manufactured clothing. Uh, I guess they dyed it. And he worked there for, through the winter. Mm. So they always tried to get something. Uh, he, uh, that's my great grandfather. He tried to open a bar in the, his front room in his house. And well, it was going great, <laughs> going great, you know. And but it got out of hand, and my great grandmother she shut it down. <laughs> get out, get out, go down the cellar and clean the dishes. There was a lot of deaths. People would fall off the barges as they were loading them up, and they'd drown. Uh, uh, the uh, clay banks were cut in stages, steps. They had a couple of injuries with deaths, people falling off the edge. So it wasn't an easy job. My mother, my mother, when she was a young girl, she used to take my grandfather's breakfast to him before she'd go to school. And he was working in the yard towards Havistraw. Mm. So she had to walk all the way through Grassy Point to the brickyard, give him his lunch. Wow. And then some kids, some kids, they'd work in the brickyards, 11, 12 years old, and they'd be s separating bricks before they went to school. and. The state got after them, the kids. I've been picking up bricks since I was 12 years old. Bringing it home, my mother said, what are you going to do? I don't know. I think this is so-and-so company. 
So I've been gathering bricks for all these years. I, I have as many of these bricks in my basement. In fact, this were most of these bricks here come out of my basement. I had a wall like this, maybe a little bit longer. It's the same kind of layout, and I label the bricks what, wow. yard, what yard they came from, names, some I don't have, and a lot of these bricks here I brought down here. Now, there's still bricks up in the basement. <laughs> my, my children are going to have a, a ball throwing things out. If I had to come to Hammershaw for some reason, maybe go down by the um, uh -huh. park my car, take a walk up this way, and walk down. I grab a couple of bricks. Yeah, a, a, a lot of them were uh, 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 double takes. Yeah, yeah, I'll take that one too. And then um, my uh, grandfather had again in his family. They live right on the river in Stony Point, just up from the Penny Bridge. I don't know where you know where that is. Or not. And that was an inlet to other brickyards. There's a creek there. Um, there'd be a few bricks around there. And then I'd, I'd still walk north and south there and pick up stuff. My wife used to just shake her head. I can remember going with my father down to the Brophy site along the creek. Oh, okay. The trailer on the back of the car, and picking up the bricks. Yeah. I got a behind a shed in my yard. There's Brophy brick piles of it back there. You know, sinking into the ground now because mm. they haven't been touching so long. But uh, I can remember that. Uh, you know, I was a I had to be eight, nine years old. He would go down. Matter of fact, he built a house out of it to begin with in 47 or 46. And then after that, we were down there scrapping up the brick that was left. You know, it would rain and the clay would come away from it and you'd go down and find good brick, you know. I heard about the Brick Museum, uh, that it was going to start. There was a couple of articles in the local newspapers. And I thought, well, I'm going to go down and see what this is all about. You know, I have family history in the brickyards. I have a collection of bricks. So, um, so I went to a couple meetings and first thing you know, I was put on some kind of a committee and then from there it just grew and we were, people were donating tools, brick molds, uh, and these were people that had family relations with the brickyards and it was good. Uh, it struck up a lot of interest with the residents. You know, people in Havistore, West Havistore, Garnival, Stony Point. And we went from there. Like Tom was saying, from Ireland, my grand great grandfather was sponsored by Brewster J. Allison. At the age of 14 years old, he came to this country uh -huh. to work in the brickyard. And I don't know how many years after he was here, he established his own brickyard. Hey, you know, and it just hey, started hey, to, 1886. Started the bubble from there. You know, he had brick, two or three brickyards down here. He was in with married a Marcy. He had a Brophy and Marcy brick. And then my grandmother. And his son, um, she was a Riley. She's a Riley and Rose, Riley and Clark. <laughs> There's brick all around me, you know. Uh, yeah. It's outrageous. Really. And when you start to think of you know, what went on and everything, it, it, it's mind boggling. The brick that went out of here amazes me. You know, six million out of this yard, 
Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe another four million out of this yard, you yeah. know, and it's all going down river. Down river, you know. Some of the even went into some of it some of the brick went into Virginia and uh, on the way back they would bring wood from Virginia. So they could use it here in the brickyard kilns to burn the wood. Because it was getting scarce out of the mountains here. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how long that lasted, but quite a hike. Yep. But you know the, the the boys had to come back here, so yeah, might as well come back full. Come back, yeah. Well, you know, there was there was four brothers, and three of them stayed with the father. And PB, he had his own brickyard. Mm -hmm. uh, that was Patrick Brophy, the son. Uh, yeah, um, he but was kind. See bricks. Some of the bricks come through with PB on them. That's one of the sons. The other sons were under the Brophy name, you know, mm. or the Brophy brothers. Knowing on how, you know, the young man came from Ireland at 14 years old, and the next thing you know, he's a brick manufacturer, you know, after he must have been a real frugal gentleman saving his money, you know, to buy a, a yard or somebody lending him a yard or whatever, however he went about it, you know. But, uh, the big huge house he built is still here and you know, my grandfather's house. That's still on Wood Avenue, big old Victorian. Well, of course the Brophy Brick, I married a Brophy. And when my grandfather uh, uh, Sullivan worked for Wren, he was a boss. And in fact, Mr. Wren was very generous. Uh, my father, my grandfather had a, a young girl, baby girl, and she died within two months. And uh, Mr. Wren paid for the whole funeral. Uh, and he he did some oh he he left he left my grandfather I don't know four or five thousand dollars when Mr. Rand died is in his will and my grandfather Sullivan died in 1930 so that five thousand dollars kept my grandmother going for a while well when you hold a brick you think construction. You think a building. Could be building a house, could be building a bridge, uh, maybe just uh, lining a wall of brick. Uh, and there's a certain amount of warmth looking at a brick, red brick, especially a red brick wall. There's a certain amount of you know, warm feeling from it. Not everybody, but. So that's that's what I get out of it, right? Yeah. And then, <laughs> and if you're a rebel rouser or a troublemaker, you break up the bricks and you can throw them at each other. Brick bats. Uh, brick bats. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I brick look at bad. one made today, and I look at one made during the 1900s or whatever, and this I see machine, and this I see people. Yeah. You, know, you just can see the love and everything they put into that, making that brick. You know, that's the way I look at it. Yeah. I see one today, it's so perfect and square and everything, and those made years ago, the edges might have been a little rounded and everything. Nowadays, it's a perfect yeah. square, you know, or rectangle. And uh, my love is in the bricks of that, you know, because you know these are mass produced and all that stuff. You know. But uh, I, that's my feelings in the brick, you know, and the names. Uh, the names give me the chills. You know. yeah. uh, well, have a show. Is it? Everybody basically was related in every brickyard. 
from the Dunnigan to the Brophy to the Marcy to the Roses to the Clarks and so on and so on. You always had a piece of, you know, everybody was entwined. You know, there was no feuds or nothing. It's just mm -hmm. a, a happy community. You know? Spats here and there, you know, but uh, they go on the along. That's the job. Though. And Amistrell was known as the brick making capital of the world. The world. So, that wraps it up? Yeah, I think so. It's beautifully said.